firms when they develop new technologies pursuing the S-curve of technology improvement and aiming to achieve the S-curve of technology adoption. We also aim to set a standard, to set a dominant design for the industry. In VC is a crucial battle that many firms will get into. At the very beginning of a new technology S-curve, there will be a lot of different designs, a lot of different standards. This is what we define as an age of turbulence. In then eventually one or few design will emerge as a dominant design with dominant standard in the industry. Thus, many industries experience a strong pressure to select a single or few dominant designs. And there are many factors shaping the strategy of firms to achieve, to rise as the firm that is setting the stage for the dominant design in the industry and then to um, exploit the advantage, exploit the position of being the firm that was able to set the dominant design in the industry. So there are multiple strategies that firms will deploy to achieve this. In, by deploying this strategy, they also enhance the likelihood that their technology will rise to the dominance. Let's take a look at one example. The battle for mobile payment system, bottom line up. Still now, there is no single standard payment system globally. So here we are still in an age of turbulence. We don't even know whether one single champion will emerge and will set a standard globally. Perhaps we will still see different standards regionally. So with firms, in some cases, also helped by government regulation being the standard for mobile banking. So what, what do we see at the moment? So at the moment we see that there are some different standards depending on uh, different geographical areas. There is one area, Europe, America. So in this area, what is uh, the typical payment system, mobile payment system is enabled by NFC chips embedded in your smartphone, for example, embedded into the iPhones. So an NFC is a near field communication, which means that you need to put your phone uh, next to one another or next to the payment system and in the data will be transferred. Very important point here is that this system still require a credit card to fulfill the transaction. So the role by Visa or MasterCard is not um, limited by this payment system because they can still fulfill the transaction. So here we see some complementarity. The mobile payment system is complemented by Visa, MasterCard and credit cards to fulfill the transaction. But this is not the only standard in the mobile payment system. Think of China. China has been using a different system for mobile, for mobile payments. Uh, one is Alipay, the other one is WeChat, but both of them use this, the same technology, which is to rely on a QR code with information uh, to make a transfer. So in this case, there is no need of a credit card because the transfer will be made uh, online will be made through account. Or we can look at the example of Southeast Asia. So in Southeast Asia, instead of seeing the dominance of Alipay and WeChat, we see something that to some extent is similar because it's still based on QR code, but it's actually a transaction account to account. So this is what we de define as A to A mobile payment, account to account mobile payment, prompt pay, widely adopted in Thailand is an example of this from page generating a QR code and then um, the, the, the transfer would be from bank account of a sender to the bank account of a receiver. There are also other uh, cases, uh, for example, India, for example, Africa. So these are 
countries where many people are still underbanked or even unbanked. Unbanked means that they don't have a credit card, they don't have a bank account, they don't have any access, any access to financial services. So as you can see, in these markets it would be difficult to adopt uh, the NFC system plus credit card of the West, but would also be difficult to adopt the system of A to A transaction like in Southeast Asia because people won't really have a bank account from which they can uh, send the money. And so in these countries, as especially in Africa, where there is a very high ratio of people that are underbanked or unbanked, there are other options. For example, one is M-Pesa. M-Pesa is based on SMS system. And so people can transfer the money through SMS. It's not actually, you know, like technically, they're not transferring the money through the SMS, but they will send to a network of shops and then you will go to the shop and then you can collect the cash from this shop based on how much you wanted to transfer or how much you wanted to receive and you will show the sms with uh, as a proof as an evidence of a transaction that you would like to do so basically the sms is just to exchange information and then this the, the actual transaction the actual payment will be done through shops uh, normal shops like mom and pop shops traditional shops all across uh, African countries and by showing the SMS you will get the cash. So this means that there are still multiple standards at play globally and there is no single standard. Which standard will win? Which company will win this uh, competition? And there are many other questions that we may ask about this uh, battle. Uh, for example, whether there are advantages and disadvantages of having so many mobile systems. What are the advantages and disadvantages between the mobile payment system in rich countries and the mobile payment system, system in emerging countries? How to encourage people to adopt a mobile payment system? How to encourage people perhaps to shift from a mobile payment system to, to another. Also, the impact on credit card businesses. So as you can see, in the West, where credit cards were very strong and very adopted already by businesses, people, and so on, the mobile payment system didn't want to replace credit cards. And these echoes the theory by Everett Rogers on the adoption of innovation. For people to adopt innovation, we need to follow some criteria. One criteria identified by Rogers is that the new innovation is not replacing existing innovation, because if innovation is completely replacing existing technologies, so then there will be more resistance from people to adopt the new innovation. And that's why we in the West, we see still the dominant role played by Visa and MasterCard because the mobile payment system didn't want to completely replace the existing system, the existing technology based on credit cards because it would have been much more challenging to persuade people to actually move, break away from credit card system to the new innovation. This is just an example of multiple standards, multiple design, but leads exactly to what you will learn in this video. So what are the factors that affect the choice of a dominant design? And also what is the value of achieving this dominant design? why dominant designs are selected. So there are basically two main reasons why dominant designs are selected. The first reason is the learning curve. So the increasing return of the adoption of new uh, technology, of new innovations. The second reason is the externalities, the positive network externalities of adopting 
the same standard. What is a learning curve? So the learning curve is essentially that trend, that phenomenon, that when a technology is used, so producer learn how to make it more efficiently and more effectively and consequently then also the cost to produce this technology will go down. So when we have a higher efficiency, the other side of higher efficiency is that the cost will decrease. <clears throat> this is essentially the learning curve, which means that the more you are working, the more you are producing, the better you will become, the better your staff will be at doing things. And this is essentially about the prior learning. The more you learn, then the more you will be able to deliver efficiently in future. This is linked to a concept which is a concept of absorptive capacity. So what is absorptive capacity? So the definition of absorptive capacity is all the knowledge or the prior existing knowledge of an organization and how this knowledge influence the ability of the organization to detect new trends, to identify new opportunities, to capitalize on their knowledge and expertise and to promote and advance new innovations. So according to the theories of assertive capacity, the more organizations are able to build on their existing knowledge into faster new innovations based on the existing knowledge, so the more these companies will continue to develop and to be ahead of competitors. So if you're not ahead of others, if you're constantly catching up with your competitors, then you will lack of absorptive capacity, which will result in your company being a late comer to the market, a late uh, adopter of new innovations. So this was the first factor, the first reason why companies want to uh, adopt a, a dominant uh, design, a dominant standard. The second reason is related to network externalities. So network externalities are essentially the benefits of having more people using the same products based on the same standards. Next, network externalities can work well in industries that are actually connected in a network. So the typical example of this could be telecommunications, but also infrastructure. So these are, these are like network-based type of industries. So of course, here we see network externalities. So the more people coming on board, the higher the value of a network, the higher the value delivered by the company. This would be also the case, for instance, of platform business model, uh, such as e-commerce or social networks, so they, which are based also on this key, key value proposition of increasing the value of their network. We have also a second example of network externalities. This is for every industry, so it doesn't have to be necessarily on physically network industries or platform business models. So this is next door externality based on compatibility uh, and also possibly with complementary goods. <clears throat> so an example of this could be users adopting Windows as an operating system. So the reason why they do so, it's because of the compatibility in the fact that it's easier to exchange files and communicate with other people using Windows operating system. This even led to the definition of Wintel, Windows plus Intel, which is really a common standard for many laptops. And on this a common standard, common ground for many laptops, there have been a lot of complementary goods, for example, software that can be used specifically on this uh, common ground. We can see a bit uh, more in details about this uh, phenomenon uh, in, the, in this um, diagram. So we see 
on, a, on the top area of a diagram the size of the installed base. So the installed base is the technical definition of what I just define as the common ground of, for example, having Windows plus Intel, Windows as operating system, Intel for the microprocessors, which is the typical installed base of most PCs and laptops. When you have a sufficiently large install base, which is the case of Wintel, because uh, other than users that prefer Apple uh, products, then all the others are actually using Wintel type of products. So there will be this attraction of complementary goods that will come on the size on the install base. The bigger the install base, the more uh, complementary goods will come. And that's the case uh, of software that are based on uh, Windows and Intel. So because um, it's easier for other people to, to use them since they will all share the same characteristic and, and, and basically like language and exchange information will be easier. So these are the economic technology reasons why companies would like to adopt a single dominant design, but we are, it's not all. So one more reason could be given by the government regulation. So sometimes government would like to step in because they deem beneficial to have a common standard in the industry. An example of this, this is an example coming from the European Union, so in the late 90s, the European Union adopted the GSM, which is a general standard for mobile communication. So all mobile communication being based on this standard. And the reason is that the European Union at the moment consists of 27 member countries. Uh, back in the days was a little less, but still each country otherwise would have come up with their own standard and of course this would have been a major issue for people you know traveling across Europe to to have like different standards for telecommunications so this is an example of government regulation government induced standardization in the industry a final point is that <clears throat> companies may want to achieve this standard common standard in the industry because they want to be the winner taking all of a market and thus reaching a monopoly. So when you are able to do this, for example, when you are able to um, exclude others from the market because you set the standard in the market, you also lock your um, new standard with key uh, suppliers in the market and so other competitors can't have access to the supply base so then you're able to lock out competitors from the market and you will be the one winning the all uh, the entire market winning the all market so this is uh, related to the concept of path dependency so increasing returns on your common uh, single system <clears throat> Will, uh, will lead to the path dependency. So how can we define path dependencies? So path dependency basically means that there, there are some small events which may have some significant impact on the adoption of a single standard or of a dominant design. These events could be, for example, the timing, but your innovation was promoted at the right timing and, and, and this led to a higher adoption of your innovation. It could be also because you set up some exclusive relations with suppliers and thereby you were able to push for the adoption of your technology because you work together with all your supply chain and this enforced the adoption of your technology and alternative design, alternative standards, consequently were not selected. Keep also in mind that not always technology superior products will be the one winning the all market. So it could be that sometimes companies that 
thanks to the path dependency, are able to, um, to, to achieve this, to be the, the winner takes all of the market, are not the one actually providing the solution which is technology superior. So to wrap up, to conclude on the most important takeaway of the class. So first, uh, we need to consider that firms in the S-curve of technology performance, they will try to impose their standard in the industry. We have also seen that this is very important. Some industry already adopted some single standards. In other industry, we are seeing right now this age of turbulence with a lot of standards fighting against one another. However, there are two major reasons for companies to push for the adoption of single standards. The first reason is the learning curve, the experience, and the positive return on investment by adopting a single standard. The second reason is the externalities, and especially if you are able to become uh, the install base like Windows, uh, Wintel, Windows plus Intel. So the install base where many other uh, complementary technologies can be plugged in. If you are able to achieve this, this can pave the way to become the winner takes all in the market. So the company that will eventually reach a monopoly or a dominant position in the market as well. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.